Hey everyone, I'm Laura. I'm Spencer, and we're married with board games. Some games offer many different ways to tell stories. Sometimes it's the event cards and the way they are played, while other times you have a more active hand in spinning a narrative. But in Shahrazad, a one to two player tile laying game from Osprey Games, we've experienced a new to us way to tell a story. Laying down tiles in a linear pattern to try to make the most impressive story for the king. So, what did we think of this abstract storytelling method? We'll show you the game at the table and then we'll share our thoughts. Okay, this is Shirazad. I'm set up for a two player game, but it can be played one or two, but mechanically they essentially work the same way. I want to point out to you the elements on the tile first. So there's the illustration, name of the tile, the, uh, the number of the tile, you got the color, and then down here shows the other numbers of the same color. So for example, uh, 1, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 20 are all going to be blue tiles. So that's very helpful for when you're planning on when to lay down a tile. Essentially what you want is as you build this tapestry of tiles, you want as many of the same color touching as possible, going from left to right. It's difficult though, because when you lay down a tile, you want it to be going from left to right, you want it to be higher than the previous number. So for example, I have to put this 14 here next to this 11. Now when you do put it down, you can either put it beside it or in a column. In a two player game, you can only have up to three tiles in a column. Three tiles in a column. In a solo game, you can have up to four. But you can't ever have more than that. So there is a restriction on how many you can have in a column. You can go as far left or right as you want to, but again, you don't want to put a tile that is higher than one to the left of it. So again, I don't want to put down this, uh, this 20 right here because at the end of the game, it's going to cause me a penalty. When you lay down a tile, it does have to be offset, so it's not right next to each other. You got to do it that way because again, you're going to be putting it down like that. So on your turn, basically what you'll do is you can either put down a tile or you can replace a tile. So if I've got a hand of tiles here, I can take this one. That'd be a bad choice, but I can put that one down and then I would draw another one. Then on my next turn, I'd actually have to put down two in the same turn. So that makes it a little bit more challenging. So you really have to weigh that decision of if you want to replace a tile or not. When you're putting down your tile, you always have to at least touch one existing tile. And you just continue this way until you've played out all of your tiles. So this is going to be a really bad example for scoring purposes, but I'm going to do it anyway. The way scoring works is you'll check each column from left to right, and if any tile is touching a lower number tile in the column to its right, you flip the higher number tile face down. So seven, oops, so this would be flipped over because seven is higher than the five. Uh, the 20 is higher than all of these, so it'd be flipped over. The 6 is okay, the 6 is lower than the 11, uh, then the 11 goes to 14, that's fine. But then you've got an 8 here, so i got to flip the 11 over. And then, uh, so what we have here essentially is, is a really bad story. And so since this one's not, you, you have to, what you have to do is you have to be able to make uh, a story, a connection from left to right. So since there's not a connection here, uh, this would just fail. It'd be a really bad story and really wouldn't make any points. But let's say that um, I had done this and, and let's say that uh, this was better and this one was here. And let's just say that that, that, that worked. Uh, then what you would do is then you would take the largest group of each color. So let's say that, that this was legitimate. I would get four points for blue or actually five because this one would touch and then one point here and one point here and one point here. Add all those together. You can keep track of your score with the scoring tiles. What you do is you, you take the arrow and you so let's say my total points were five. I would line it up and do it like this. And then the next round, if I get a 10, 20, 20 points would be 25 points here um so that's uh that's it you do two rounds at the end of the first round you remove all the tiles that you had to turn face down you can keep any existing column and then play off of that and then at the end of the game you look at what your total score is and then you compare it to the verdict from the king so uh 
if uh, if you got 35 or higher, uh, I'm not crying, you're crying, because the story is so awesome. But in a nutshell, that's how to play Shirazad, a brief overview of the components. Now let's head to our thoughts. All right, now that you've gotten to look at that beautiful production for yourself on the table, let's talk about it more. Yes, so as you said, it's beautiful. Yes, I love it. It's a really good looking game. Mm -hmm. What I like is that it's not just printed on there. There's a, there's a good texture on those. I think it's because it's the linen finish, linen finish tiles, which you don't usually see that mm -hmm. because you're usually you're punching those out of punch board. Mm -hmm. But with this, they're already manufactured and it's a very good quality game. Yes, um, and yeah, like you said, there's depth mm -hmm. in those so that it, it's just so much more eye-catching well, than, than a standard. I think a word you've used to describe them is very ornate. Yes. I, it's just the, the contrast, not only the images, but like the different, the main colors of the titles with a little bit of gold in there. It's just, it's very good to look at. Um, really easy on the eyes, and you, which is something that you want when you're thinking really hard and you want something that's going to be nice to look at. Right, um, but along with that, I mean, at its core, this is taking a tile mm -hmm. and placing it. And right. so, I mean, when you think that of, oh, well, this will be a cinch, you get into the gameplay and there are some tough decisions to make. Right, exactly. So like you said, it's, it's a simple idea mm -hmm. of just putting that tile down, but man, it's it's challenging to master. To get it into the right place, mm -hmm. to, to have a good through line in your story. Yeah. And, um, and and knowing when to use that ability to... To swap. To, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the right time to do it. Because I feel like a lot of the times that we've played it, we aren't figuring out when you do that until the end. Right. When it's, there are no new tiles to pick up. And mm -hmm. so you can't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so, man, yeah, it's definitely challenging. Especially, I mean... And I think both ways, mm -hmm. one player and two players. Right, definitely. Well, what I like is is one of the things that's really challenging is it's you just want to go ahead and, and just put down, oh, well, I can just put down this 21 here. It's fine. If I put it down next to this 11, obviously the 21 is right next to 11. It's fine because it comes later. But no, you have to think ahead. You really have to plan ahead and knowing, okay, you look down and see which, which numbers are in that color of tile. Mm -hmm. You have to plan ahead. Okay, I need to save this one for later. Mm -hmm. Or I need to save, make sure that there's a space left above yeah, or below this. Yeah, you save room for those numbers in between. Mm -hmm. And there's only three allowed in each column. Yeah. That's the thing that gets it's, me the most. It's really, and I love the, the way of thinking that it, that it brings brings up. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's it's, it's awesome. something different that I haven't yeah. had to do usually right. in the tabletop game. So right. I've really enjoyed that. Well, and, and so you get all that experience. You get the, those that brain power going on in a very relatively quick amount of time. Definitely. Um, it's you you play two rounds, mm -hmm. and both rounds go quick. I mean, it's fifteen minutes basically. Well, and I like how it works of, you know, whatever didn't work in your story mm -hmm. gets removed from the game for yeah. the second round. Mm -hmm. um, I like that for the player because, I mean, it, it takes some challenge out for you. Right. Um, to, so that you don't feel just totally mm -hmm. beaten down at the end of the game. Right. Uh, because I will admit there have been a couple of times we played it that we <laughs> totally forgot that. Yeah. And so we did play it both times with all the tiles. With all the tiles, yeah. Woo, that was a horrible yeah. score. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I feel like this game also offers a lot of replayability because it's got that score. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, you beat the game when you're done with it, right? Right. You've got, you're constantly trying to do better than the last time that you played. I know, and I love that they included with it what <laughs> your score means as far as how your story was received by the king. Yeah. I love that they included that, and, and that really gives you another reason to keep playing. It, mm -hmm. it goes hand in hand with that trying to beat your score. You're trying to tell a better story. Right, exactly, yeah. which is really neat. I like the way that even though it's, it's a very abstract game. They try as best as possible to tie that theme in there, and they do really do a good job of it. One last point I want to talk about is you did uh, earlier talk about one or two player game. It yes. says you can play it solo or two player, and I think it works either way. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've very much enjoyed playing this solo. Like this is one that that I'll pull out when when Laura's not up for a game or she's doing something else because it is because it is so quick. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it's and not simple. It's not a whole bunch of stuff you have to get right. out for and a one player game. It's very easy to set up. You can put it out, start it, go, be done with it. But it is, I like the change of playing with two player. Right. Having to, you can't reveal what's in your hand. Right. And having to rely on your partner to pick the better tile. Definitely. And then, of course, working together to put it down. But you're kind of like, please don't put down, yes. you know. Please. Please hear what I'm thinking yes. in my head. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So all in all, I would say Shirazad is a beautiful, easy to learn, but difficult to master abstract tile laying game that offers a rewarding two player or solo experience. While the idea of the game is to tell a story, really what it comes down to is grouping colors and following a number pattern. So don't expect a very rich narrative to be formed once you're done. But for its ease of learning, challenging decisions, replayability factor, and beautiful presentation. We find Shirazad to be a welcome addition to our collection. For all the reasons discussed, we give Shirazad a rating of 8 and a seal of excellence. We definitely recommend you check this one out. Thanks so much for watching this review. You can find more of our reviews right here on the Dice Tower's YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.